All right, figured I'd do a <clears throat> quick little, I guess, review, but I'm not a real big watch guy. Um, as you know that you watch my channel, I'm big into knives. But I do like watches, um, and my wife just got me this one for our anniversary. Um, and what it is is a Bernhardt Binnacle Diver. 200 meters water resistant, um, obviously a dive watch with a 120 click unidirectional bezel. Um, you've got a nice oyster style bracelet. I believe it starts at 20 millimeters and then tapers to, I want to say 17 or 18. <coughs> um, the watch is about if I had to guess, probably 13 millimeters tall, 13 and a half millimeters tall. Um, back to the bracelet, <clears throat> very nice, thick, probably, you're looking at probably close to 5 mil thick links. Uh, they're screw-in links. Uh, they take a small flathead. Um, as far as the clasp, nice scissor clasp. Um... There, Bernhardt logo with a safety flap. Um, really nice feel, very solid feeling bracelet, very solid feeling clasp. Um, really nice, actually. Really, really nice bracelet <clears throat> on this watch. Um, we get on the back. This watch used to be called the Sea Shark, but due to I don't know, some kind of legal reasoning. They had to change the name to Binnacle Diver. But basically the same name as, I mean, same watch as a Sea Shark. They just changed the name to Binnacle Diver. Um, you can see in there, solid end links. Completely solid. Very nice fitment on those end links, if I do say so. Uh, really, the bracelet is probably one of the nicest bracelets I've seen on any watch I've had. Again, I haven't had... Um, you know, I haven't had Rolexes, I haven't had um, Omegas, I haven't had anything really, really high-end, uh, and this isn't necessarily a high-end watch. Um, <clears throat> for me, it is the most expensive watch I've ever had, and probably the nicest watch I've ever had, too. Um, it's really great. Um, size of the dial, or face, is 42 millimeters, um, so that's, what, 42 from 10 to 4, I believe. Including the crown across, you're looking at probably 46 millimeters. Pretty big crown. Um, from lug to lug, I think it's like right at 50 millimeters or 51 millimeters. Um, decent sized watch. Really not a big, huge watch like um, a lot of the stuff you see today, especially dive watches. Um, I mean, I'm a big guy and I have a big wrist. I have an 8 inch wrist. And I can pull off a 48 or 46 millimeter dive watch but and it look, doesn't look bad on my wrist it didn't really swallow my wrist at all I'm just not a fan of the weight I'm not a, really a fan of the look I guess I'm more traditional in that aspect that I just like a normal sized watch um, and I guess 42 millimeter watches uh, to me are pretty much just your normal standard size um, <clears throat> the movement in this watch is a Miyota uh, 8215, is that what it's called? 8215, I believe that's what it's called, Japanese movement, uh, it's obviously automatic, so you have the sweeping, um, second hand, um, really cool, um, you have to obviously wear this watch for it to stay running, and it runs off of movement. Um, now, I believe it does have a 40 hour or 42 hour power reserve, so if you don't wear it for, you know, a day or two, <clears throat> well, two days you're screwed. But if you don't wear it for a day, it's still gonna be running. Um, really not a big of a deal to me. I like mechanical watches, I like automatic watches. I just think it's cool. Honestly, the only reason I like them is because I like that sweeping seconds hand. I just think it's really cool. Um, I like the fact you don't have to have a battery, obviously, too. But again, if you don't wear it, 
Um, every day you are occasionally going to have to reset the time. Not a big deal to me. <clears throat> so what do we got? 42 millimeters, uh, Miyota movement, Japanese movement. Um, so far this one's pretty accurate. Uh, I do not know, you know, to the second, plus or minus or any of that. I know that it is keeping correct time, <laughs> according to my iPhone, to the minute. Um, I know a lot of watch guys are probably cringing when I say that, but it seems pretty accurate to me. Um, again, I'm not a big freak about accuracy on watches or any of that. Um, loom on the watch is pretty good. Um, it's not exactly Seiko loom, so it does not look like it's on fire, but it's good enough to read in the dark, and it keeps its loom for a good time. I know the old Sea Sharks had a problem with loom. This one doesn't really seem to have much of a problem. You walk outside, and it, it's dark now, and it's been dark for a few hours, and it's been fine. Um, <clears throat> it's, what else? It has a sapphire crystal um, as opposed to like a mineral glass. Basically just harder to scratch and it's a nice feature. It's a nice feature to have. Typically it's in higher end, more expensive watches. Um, and I'm happy it has it. I like it. You know, it's very nice. Um, the bezel is unidirectional so it only turns counterclockwise it's a 120 click bezel um i know the old sea sharks uh the bezels were annoyingly loud this one that's not the case they've also fixed that the bezel is quiet sure <clears throat> and positive there's really no play in this bezel either which is very surprising because typically there's a little bit of play but there's no play in this bezel, in my particular one. Um, you've obviously got a crown at 3 o'clock. And this watch has a signed crown, B for Bernhardt. Um, my crown is obviously all the way down. It's a screw-down crown, <clears throat> and I got lucky in the sense that the B lines up perfectly. They all will not be like that. I've seen a bunch of these that are not like that. Um, a lot of watches have signed crowns, and they don't line up like that. That's just the luck of the draw. I got lucky with this one. <clears throat> Maybe it's because my for my anniversary. Um, what else can I say? I've been wearing it all day. I got it this morning, early this morning, and I love it. Um, any issues that I can think of with the watch? It did come with a very small scratch right here. Not a gouge or anything like that, because I'd be really pissed off about that. Just a um. Small hairline scratch when somebody was assembling it. Um, again, really, no. <laughs> not that I haven't seen on any other watch. Um, albeit brand new or not, I mean, that's not an issue to me. Uh, nothing is absolutely perfect. It's put together by humans, and small scratches not really bother me. But I just wanted to note it. Um, this one has a beautiful <clears throat> main reason I wanted this watch. It comes in a bunch of different colors. What does it come in now? Black, blue, green, and this burgundy, which I think is just absolutely stunning. Uh, kind of like a sunray dial, shimmers in the light. The burgundy is just really cool. I've never seen another watch with a burgundy face, especially one that shimmers. And I really liked it, so that's the one I wanted. And it's really cool. Um, very, very nice watch. I think these... Now, you can get these for under $300 shipped. Um, and to me, for what you get, Sapphire Crystal, nice dive watch, um, 200 meters, that's what, 660 feet you can go. Um, 42 millimeter Sapphire Crystal, super nice, super thick bracelet, really nice clasp. Um, I don't think it can be beat for the price. And I am definitely enjoying it. If you have any other questions about it, just let me know. And I'll do my best. Again, I'm not a big-time watch guy, but I know a little. Um, not a lot, you know, but I know a little. So if you have any questions, just let me know. You want a size reference? Here you go. <laughs> there it is next to a paramilitary, too. All right, later, guys.